Alright guys, how are you all doing? I'm Fiesta here and today we have gamers with 3 gigs of graphics will no longer be able to play Halo Infinite. That's sad. Raja Kuduri has left Intel. Another sad news. NVIDIA RTX 5080 workstation GPU has, is to rumor to have 15,360 cores and 32 gigs of memory. Gigabyte has confirmed GeForce RTX 4070 will be having 12 gigs and RTX 4060 with 8 gigs. Intel Arc A750 limited edition is now available for only 225. And lastly, we have NVIDIA has released their power tracing SDK for game developers. So firstly, we have an article from PC mag here and basically they're saying with the title locked out of halo infinite well basically why you're getting locked out because well the information has come in that if you have a, a three gigs of vram for in your gpu then you won't be able to play well halo infinite basically so basically what it means that you need at least four gigs of vram i'm guessing those 1060 you know rt uh, gtx 1060 three gigs cards you know they won't be able to run this game anymore because they were, you know, limited to 3 gigs. Same goes to those uh, cars that has less than 4 gigs of VRAM. They won't be able to run this game, basically. And, well, to be honest with you, in general, those cars struggle a lot to run this game because, you know, it's a very, you know, GPU-intensive game and, of course, it requires a lot of VRAM. So it kind of makes sense, but then again, restricting it, it's kind of, well, sad, basically, because, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can't really do anything about that. It's just the game developers don't want uh, gamers to have 3 gigs. They want more uh, VRAM, so basically that's what they're asking. I mean, that kind of makes sense because this game is a very GPU-intensive and it takes a lot of VRAM, so makes sense. But there's also a very weird caveat here, as it mentioned here, that the 1050 Ti, as we remember, it has a, well, uh, well 4 gigs... Of VRAM. Same goes for RX 570. It has two variants. RX 570 has 4 gigs and 8 gigs, both variants. But the weird thing, as I mentioned, GTX 1060 having 3 gigs cannot run, but 1050 Ti can. But remember, 1060 is better card here compared to 1050 Ti or even RX 570. So yeah, very strange in that you know in that uh, case here. But yeah, I mean. <laughs> What else you can do? Next up, we have a tweet coming from Pat Gelsinger and then replied from uh, Roger Kaduri and basically uh, saying that thank you, Pat and Intel, for many cherished memories. Well, they're, yeah, they're, he's leaving, basically, which is kind of sad because he's been a, an, an incredible engineer in, in, in terms of Intel Arc, basically. He has been working a lot in that field, so... Very much respect to Raja Kaduri for, you know, hanging in Intel and delivering Arc, Intel Arc, you know. It's the beginning of Intel's GPU journey, basically, and he, well, he's contributed there. And also now he's leaving kind of sad, but again, wishing him well for the future. And hopefully we'll be seeing him in other Czech Giants, guaranteed, because he's a big genius, I have to say. Next up, we have a tweet coming from Copite 7 coming and leaker, basically, and he's saying that I forgot to tell you about RTX 4000 SFF. Basically, he's saying maybe RTX 5000 Ada generation will have, or has, 15,360 FE32 and 32 gigs of GDDR6 memory. Again, GDDR6, not GDDR6X. Well, kind of makes sense because it's a, well, workstation GPU, right? It le requires more memory and GDDR6 uh, is more, it's cheaper, yeah, or, and more efficient, you know? Uh, yeah, basically, it will have 32 gigs of GDDR6 and 15,360 FP32 compute units, basically. And it's looking pretty solid, I have to say. They're going for the naming scheme of RTX 5000 ADA, but then again, it's not 4000, it's RTX 5000 ADA. Kind of weird, but again, they're kind of separating the naming from the gaming to the workstation, so it kind of makes sense. Next up, we have a confirmation from G Gigabyte and then later reported by video cards here. Basically, Gigabyte is informing that uh, Gigabyte RTX 4 4070 Aero OC will have 40 12 gigs, not 40 gigs, 12 gigs, and Gigabyte RTX 4060 Gaming OC will have 8 gigs. Again, RTX 4060 this is the first leak, basically. You could say it's a leak, but then again, it's coming from Gigabyte anyway, so can you say it's a leak? I mean, it should be called as a leak because RTX 4060, you know, it hasn't been even discussed yet in the uh, scene here. So, yeah, basically the RTX 4070 will have 12 gigs and RTX 4060 will 8 gigs. Kind of weird that RTX 3070 had 8 gigs, but 3060 had 12 gigs. Very weird what uh, what happened there in the last generation, but this generation, it kind of makes sense now because 12 gigs with RTX 4070 is more appealing than 8 gigs, right? So, yeah. Next up, we have a deal here from Newegg, and basically this is the... Intel Arc A750 limited edition 8 gigs 
uh, PCIe Express 4.0 graphics card here. And basically, we're looking at a 249 price tag. But we also have a promo code, which is $25 off. If you put this promo code right here, you will have this limited offer uh, or limited deal, you could say. And you can get it only 225 That's the cheapest it can get the Intel Arc A750 and honestly now that the drivers are getting better the car uh, the card is solid I have to say but the pricing well that was the issue but not anymore it seems like 249 still is a good price but now you can get that for 225 because you have the deal right there so what are you waiting for I'm guessing you're waiting for the well the drivers to get better Hopefully they will get better, but then again, for mid-range gamers, this is a very good deal. Next up, we have a big story here, or you should say, or I should say that this is really a story. Basically, the NVIDIA's new pot tracing is here, basically. And the pot tracing technology is very much appealing because it really tickles with the lightning here. So what is basically the pot tracing, right? You might wonder. Basically, the RTS pot tracing recreates the physics for the light for all sources in a particular scene and then reproduces for the eyes to be you know, realistic very much realistic that's what they claim hopefully that's what the case i mean that is the case and i also mentioned that building a reference path tracer to ensure that your lightning during production is true to life accelerating the iteration process and of course using the ada loveless architectural gpus basically the rtx 4000 series right now it seems like that only rtx 4000 series supports pod tracing because as they mentioned uh advantage of the ada loveless architecture i could be wrong here they do mention advantage of the ada loveless but maybe maybe they're implying that rtx 4000 series does better pod tracing compared to rtx 36 uh 3000 series or 2000 series who knows maybe that is the case or maybe only 4000 series only supports pod tracing but i'm guessing it's it is for the for, you know all rtx cards because you know rtx means pod tracing should support it right and if you look into the flow chart here this is the flow chart they presented basically it's uh, starting from v-buffer via ray tracing or rasterization then going to the lightning pipeline which has direct illumination path traced indirect illumination and dynamic evidence cache and then it goes to the post-processing pipeline which does the denoising and super resolution and then we get the frame generation for a particular frame basically and that's the way to do path tracing that's what they mentioned through this flowchart here it also improves the pod tracing performance and also increases accessibility which is kind of nice because uh, developers will be able to implement this and I, I get it will i guess it will be much easier for developers to implement this and have a better outcome there's another thing called caustics basically let's look into the images and uh, we'll, we'll explain this is the caustics raster depth of field if you're looking at as you can see this is kind of blurred out these edges right here even for the further end those are quite blurred out but when you look into the caustic ray trace depth of field well look at that it's very much visible and detailed i have to say even even the background look at that it's quite visible let me just give you the comparison look it's quite blurry here in my cursor right here and look at this it's quite effective so yeah it seems like caustic's working pretty good and with the naked eye, I can already tell that it's looking pretty good. So basically, they have launched the NVIDIA RTX Pod Tracing SDK. Now you can access RTX Pod Tracing SDK right here. Any developer can do that and implement in the game. So that's really nice. NVIDIA is making moves here. And well, in terms of ray tracing, NVIDIA has gone way further compared to AMD here. So yeah, interesting. Let's see what happens with Pod Tracing. Hopefully the outcomes will be good. And of course the performance. As they mentioned, it improves performance. Hopefully it does. Yeah. Alright, that is it for today. What do you think about the pod tracing technology here? Do you think it's going to be more effective compared to the normal ray tracing that we see? Because pod, pod, RTX pod tracing seems very effective. And well, they claim to be, you know, having better performance. We'll have to wait and see and uh, wait for the developers to implement in the game to test it, actually test it and know if if that makes any difference i am hoping it will and the performance that's the most important thing so let's see what happens till then have a good day like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video